Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And you see the spirit from the hostages, and that's what they are as hostages. They've been treated terribly and very unfairly, and you know that, and everybody knows that. And we're going to be working on that soon. The first day we get into office, we're going to save our country, and we're going to work with the people to treat those unbelievable patriots, and they were unbelievable patriots and are. You see the spirit just cheering, they're making the cheering while they're doing that, and they did that in prison, and it's a disgrace, in my opinion. So I just want to thank you, and I want to say a very special hello to Dayton, because Dayton turned out to be a big victory for Trump, and that was good for all of us. But I'm thrilled to be back with the proud, hardworking patriots of the great state of Ohio. I won this state, and you won this state. But before going any further, I want to express our love for everyone touched by the terrible tornadoes that hit your state. They really hit it hard. Our hearts are with the families that lost a home or loved ones. And uh, it's a very, uh, very serious situation going on right now. So we are all praying for them. And uh, I know everybody here, this is a very big crowd, and I know everybody here feels the same way. As you know, this has been uh, Something very important is we see pr people in trouble. They're really people in trouble. We're going to help people in trouble. Right now, our country's in trouble. And we're going to help our country that's in trouble. And we're going to make it great again, and we're going to do it very fast. So, as you know, this has been an incredible week for our campaign. Unbelievable week. And on Tuesday, we won Georgia, Hawaii, Mississippi, and Washington. And we won them in record numbers, by the way. No, I mean, the numbers are crazy. What the hell is going on? Something's going on here. Because nobody's ever seen, they've never seen numbers like this. You know what it is? They see how bad these people are that are destroying our country. That's what it is. And that's, in my opinion, what it really is. And uh, we clinched a thing called the Republican nomination for President of the United States. And to all Republicans, independents, and disillusioned Democrats, of which there are many, I invite you to join our movement to save our country. We're going to save our country. This is the greatest movement in the history of our country. And, you know, I was saying the other day that uh, 
In 2016, one of the biggest issues was the border. And I sort of won on the border, I guess, maybe. And we fixed the border. We fixed it so good that I couldn't even use it in 2020, even though we got millions and millions more votes in 2020. But we couldn't even talk about it. I'd say, I want to talk about the border. Tell them what a good job. They said, sir, you fixed it. Nobody cares. That border was a tiny fraction of what this border is. This is the worst border in the history of the world. There's never been anything. Millions and millions of people are pouring into our country, probably 15 or 16 million people. That's almost larger than any state we have in the Union. And they're coming in from places you don't want to know about. So uh, we're going to fix it again. But boy, what a mess. What these people have done to our country, it's almost hard to believe, frankly. The fastest way to reverse every single Biden disaster is to very simply just put me back in office. We'll get it done quick. We'll get it done very quickly. And we want to have a rock solid majority in the Senate. We want to take over the House. We have incredible people here with us today, some great leaders and uh, leaders that have been warriors for me. And that's why we want to follow up our historic victory this week. That was a great victory, the biggest and the fastest ever. It's never been one that quick. We went, we moved very quickly. We got very tough in the end, didn't we? We had no choice. We wanted to get a little tough to get it over with, and we got it over with. But it's the fastest ever, and uh, that means we have the longest wait ever. Seven months is a long time, a little more than seven months. It's like an eternity when you have people that are incompetent running your country into the ground. But if we could, we're going to take that victory and we're going to add to it with Bernie Marino, who's a fantastic guy. <laughs> Bernie is a fantastic guy. He's getting some very tough Democrat fake treatment right now. And we're not going to stand for it because uh, I know this man. We all know this man. He's a hero. He's a winner. And uh, we're not going to let these people, these people are sick between Russia, Russia, Russia for two years and Ukraine, 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 51 intelligence agents. I went one after another. One would stop and then they'd lie again. And all the way to where we are right now, where we're leading Biden by numbers that nobody's ever seen before. And we have to keep it going. So Bernie Marino, we want to. Uh, where is Bernie? Is he around here? He's, ah, there is Bernie. And a great family. And Max, we love Max. Max was with me for four years, our great congressman. And uh, Bernie, I heard you're doing really well. I heard you had a great poll today. You got to win, Bernie. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone, Bernie. But Ohio needs to defeat your horrendous radical left Democrat, Senator Sherrod Brown, who pretends he's my best friend. He pretends he's my best friend until he gets in, and then he goes radical left all the time. You know, if you listen to his commercials, he sounds like he's running with Trump. He's not. He's not. Now, I agree with the president on borders. I like the president on the economy and on if I like him, I think he's great. He's not with me. And the day he gets out, he votes with Biden all the time. And if you vote with Biden, this country is finished, I'll tell you right now. And we have to elect Bernie to get in there and to seal our border, stop inflation, crush the deep state. We started that when we got rid of Comey. Drill, baby, drill, and prevent World War III. And remember this. Remember this. Joe Biden is a great threat to our democracy. He's a tremendous threat to our democracy. His incompetence is the number one reason. Also, he uses the Justice Department, the FBI, to go after his political opponent. It happens to be me. How are we doing? And he's driven my numbers through the roof. Do it one or two more times. Let's, how about a couple of more indictments, Joe, you dumb son of a... A dumb son of a... Somebody said they're indicting this guy into the office and uh, office of president. But uh, they've never done that in this country before. That's never happened. But we're going to discuss that. You know the nice thing we have? It's a beautiful day. A little windy out here, I must be honest with you, but that's OK. You know, it's good when you don't have to use a teleprompter, because I can't read a word. On the They're moving around. 
I don't know what the hell I'm doing up here, Bernie. These suckers are moving. My guys did a great job in planting them solidly. Thank goodness. We can do a non-teleprompter speech. It's actually much better. But these teleprompters. They're moving around. I'm trying to go. <laughs> I'm trying to follow. Oh, no, we don't need them. Isn't it nice to have a president who doesn't need a teleprompter? That night? These suckers are moving around. Great job, fellas. I appreciate it. With your vote, we're going to take back the Senate. We're going to win Ohio in November. We're going to win by a lot. You know, we're up like 16 or 18 points. I saw one. We're up 20 points in Ohio. And we're going to look at crooked Joe Biden, and we're going to say, Joe, you're fired. Get out of here. You've done a terrible job. You've done a terrible job. You've been a terrible president. He's a terrible president. He's the worst president we've ever had. There's never been a president so bad as this guy. There's never been anything like it. He's incompetent. He's crooked. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Can't walk off a stage. Can't put two sentences together. He's a disaster for our country. You know, I say it. I say it a lot. I used to say five worst presidents, right? Now I say, if you took and I say it, and I think I can go up further. What do you think? Another three or four? Add another three, four, or five? If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of our country, put them together, they will not have done the damage to our country as this incompetent, crooked guy has done to our country. And that's what he is. And you know, to be honest, I treated him with more respect than I do now. I don't treat him with respect, because he did this weaponization thing with the DOJ and the FBI. They raided my house. And once he did that, I said, well, I guess that game is over. Nobody thought it was possible. In fact, even the lunatics over at CNN and MSDNC, they would say, well, no, these aren't crimes. These aren't crimes. You know, you fight an election, and they end up indicting you because you fought a crooked election. Think of it. You fight a crooked election, and they indict you. They don't indict the guys that made the election crooked. They go, the people that want to have honest elections get themselves in trouble because these people are sick in Washington, and we're going to change it around fast, I'll tell you right now. But among my very first actions upon taking office will be to stop the invasion of our country and send Joe Biden's illegal aliens back home. These are the roughest people you've ever seen. You know, now we have a new form of crime. I call it Biden migrant crime, but it's too long, so let's just call it migrant crime. We have a new category. You know, you have vicious crimes, you have violent crimes, you have all these. Now we have migrant crimes, and they're rough. They're rough, and it's going to double up, and you see what's happening. You know, throughout the world right now, I don't know if you know this, crime is way, way down. You know why? Because they sent us their criminals. That's why. It's true. It's true. They sent, you know, Venezuela is down 66 percent because they sent us their gang members and their gangsters. They sent us their drug dealers and their murderers. They're all coming into our country. And Venezuela now, their crime is down 66 percent. And all over the world, crime is down because they've sent them to the United States of America. We have a stupid president that allows this to happen. Stupid. Thank goodness we have J.D. here. That's all I can tell you. Boy. All right, J.D. Oh, we have Jim Jordan here. Whoa, we have the heavyweights. We have Jim. We have the whole group. Wow, that's exciting. Now, Jim Jordan doesn't mind the fact that they've sent us all their murders. He's very liberal. You know that. He thinks it's what. No. You know what? I'm looking at J.D. I'm looking at these guys. They're like seething as I talk. Seething. They're so angry. Think of it. All over the world, they're smart people. You know, I know many of the leaders. I got to know them very well. They're smart. They're tough. They're streetwise. You know, we have a man that can't, he can't talk. He can't even talk. He doesn't know where the hell he is. He can't find his way off a stage like this. Well, this one's tougher because we only have four. We only have four stairs. 
and a, and a long ramp. So this one I can understand. But he can't find his way off the stage, can't do anything. And he's in charge of dealing with Putin and Xi and Kim Jong-un of North Korea. The whole thing is crazy. It's crazy. But when these guys, who are incredible, when these guys hear the stories about crime, to me, that's one of the worst of all. And this is all over the world. They're sending from all over the world, not just South America, Latin America. They're sending them from Asia. They're sending them from Africa, the Congo. Last night, 22 people arrived from the Congo. Now, the Congo is a very nice place, I would imagine. But they arrived from the Congo, and they came from prison. Where are you from in the Congo? What's your address? Prison. Now, these are rough people. They're coming from Africa. They're coming from Asia. They're coming from the Middle East. They're coming from Yemen, all over the place from Yemen. I thought we were bombing Yemen. Here we go with the bombing again. You could solve that whole problem with a phone call if they respected you. But they have no respect for this guy. They have no respect for him whatsoever. Viktor Orban, the prime minister of Hungary, very tough man, probably the toughest guy. There is, frankly, toughest in Europe. A lot of people don't like him because he's tough. He says, I don't want to have criminals in my country, if that's OK with you. They asked him, what's going on with the world? What's happening? This is three weeks ago. They interviewed him. What, what do we do? The world is blowing up. Israel, Ukraine, the whole place is blowing up. What do you do? He said, you get back President Trump. When President Trump was president, we had none of this. Ukraine wouldn't have been attacked. They wouldn't be fighting with Russia. Russia wouldn't have attacked them for a lot of reasons. Number one, I said, don't do it. And number two, the oil prices were too low for them to do it. They couldn't have afforded it. October 7th, Israel would have never been attacked. Iran was broke. I say it respectfully. Iran was broke. They had no money because they weren't allowed to sell oil. I told China, if you buy one barrel of oil from Iran, we're not going to do business with you. We're going to put tariffs all over the place. We're going to raise your tariffs to 100 percent. I already raised them to 50 percent. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. No other president took in 10 cents from China, not 10 cents. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China and others and others. Unbelievable when I see it, when I see it going. But I got to know all these people. They're very smart, very streetwise. And I would do the same thing. If I had prisons that were teeming with MS-13 and all sorts of people that they've got to take care of for the next 50 years, right? Young people, they're in jail for years. And if you call them people, I don't know if you call them people. In some cases, they're not people, in my opinion. But I'm not allowed to say that because the radical left says that's a terrible thing to say. They say, you have to vote against him, because did you hear what he said about humanity? I've seen the humanity, and these humanity, these are bad. These are animals, OK? And we have to stop it. We can't have another Lakin. We have so many people. We have so many people being hurt so badly and being killed. They're sending their prisoners to see us. They're sending, and they're bringing them right to the border. And they're dropping them off, and we're allowing them to come in. And these are tougher than anybody we've got in the country. These are hardened criminals. And we've got hundreds of thousands of them. And uh, we're not going to take it. We're just not going to take it. We're destroying. They are destroying our country. I'm telling you, he's the worst president we've ever had and the most incompetent president we've ever had. And he's also the most crooked president we have ever, ever had. Now, other than that, I think he's doing an excellent job. Do we agree? Other than that, quite good, right, J.D.? Those few things. He's incompetent, he's crooked. He's a dumbest guy. How the hell this happened? What a fake election that was. He ran from the basement. We got more votes than any sitting president in history, but we lost. I was told if we got 63 million votes, we couldn't lose by Fabrizio, great pollster, John McLaughlin, great pollster, Sir, if you get 63 million, you cannot. We got 75. We got much more than that. We got, they report, almost 75 million. They report, not 63, 75. We lost by a whisker, just a whisker, you know, with their mail-in ballot hoaxes. You better go quickly. 
to paper ballots, voter ID, and one-day voting, or you're not going to have — you're not going to have anything. One week ago, I met with the family of 22-year-old nursing student, incredible person, Lake and Riley, who was brutally murdered in Georgia last month while out on a morning run. She was so badly beaten up, unrecognizable. Can you believe it? Lakin's killer was set loose into the United States through Joe Biden's program of releasing military-aged males into our communities after they've illegally crossed our southern border. And that's what happened, that his animal came in. Lake and Riley would be alive today if Biden had not unleashed a savage attack on America. And that's what he's done. But instead of apologizing to Lakin's family, Joe Biden apologized to the killer for calling him illegal. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have called him illegal. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'd like to apologize to, to the killer. They are He's more concerned with the killer. He couldn't even pronounce her name right. He's more concerned with the killer than he is with Lakin. And that's the problem. They're more concerned with criminals than they are with the people of our country that are — that built our country and that are keeping our country afloat. Because that's all. With the policies they have, all you can do is keep it afloat. And you'll be lucky if you do that. And let me tell you, seven months is not a long time in one way. In another time, it's eternity. Because these guys can do damage like nobody's ever — I don't know. They either hate our country or they're grossly incompetent. And anybody that can cheat on elections the way they do is not incompetent, okay? I think they hate our country. So now they have a new term for people like this. They call them neighbors. Neighbors. They want to call them neighbors. So they're people coming into our country illegally. Hi, neighbor. How you doing, neighbor? How's everything? Then <laughs> they punch you in the face and whack you. What a group of idiots we have. This country is — this country has never seen anything like what's happening to it now. And it's true. There's — we have never seen what's happening to our country right now. They're destroying our country. They're ruining our country. In the Republican Party, we believe that Lakin's killer is an illegal alien criminal. He is an illegal monster. He should never have been in our country, and he would have never been in our country. Never, ever would he have been in our country if the election weren't rigged because we didn't allow people like that into our country. We didn't welcome them, and they knew it. You know, does anybody like the snake? Do you know the snake? I don't know. I can't even hold this. I, I can't even hold this sucker in this wind, but we'll give it a shot. Do you mind? Let's do it. Because you know what? It's — as I'm discussing this, and on the uh, understanding that we have no teleprompters, at least let me read one little thing here. But this is um, a metaphor. Most of you have heard it. People love it. It's a very accurate metaphor. And it's about our border. It's about the people we have coming in. And don't be surprised when bad things happen, because bad things will happen. And we're going to get them out fast. We're going to have the largest deportation effort in history. But with all of that, with all of that, we've got ourselves a problem. When you have 15 million people, many of them — many of these people are people that should not be allowed into our country. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in, and I'll take care of you. Very innocent, very innocent. Take me in, oh, tender woman, take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, oh, tender woman, cried the tender snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night, and soon as she arrived, she found the pretty snake she'd taken in had been revived. Take me in, O oh, tender woman, take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh, tender woman, cried the vicious snake. Whoa. Front Row Joe got it. Look, I can't believe it. That's — you're unbelievable. They've come to 127 rallies. 
I don't know what the hell they do, but they must have a lot of money because there's a stand up front row, Joe's. I can't believe it. And that play, it fell right at, look at it, fold up. That's incredible. There's nobody more deserving of it than you guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much. This is number 127 for them. And I don't like to say it in front of them, but we have people that have actually come to more, you know, our, our wonderful women from North Carolina, right? Trying to figure out about their husbands, how they can handle it. But they seem to be handling it. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you truly would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh, tender woman. Take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh, tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman. I saved you. I saved you. And you've bit me, but why? You know your boy is poisonous. Your bite is poisonous. And now I'm going to die. Shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Now, that's what we're going through right now. We're taking in snakes. We're taking in snakes. Yeah, maybe this one gets to you, too. We're taking in <laughs> We'll get it to you. We got to smile about this. Look, if you don't have a little bit, uh, you know, it's just so crazy. There's not much to smile about, but we have to keep our chin up because what's happening to our country has never happened before. Nothing like this has ever happened before. There's a gentleman named Sean Hannity. He goes on every night. He says, a good man. He says, 100 percent certain that you're going to have massive attacks and big problems. And I have to agree with him. And, you know, I've been right about everything, they say. Trump's been right about everything. Uh, I have to agree that it's going to be — we have to work very quickly. But unfortunately, for seven months, and now really for two months after that, you're not going to be working. You're going to be in the world of politics. And they'll be saying what a wonderful thing it is that they're destroying our country. How anybody can say what they say is unbelievable. Not one more American life should be lost to migrant crime. When I'm President of the United States, we will demand justice for Lakin. On day one, my administration will terminate every open border policy of the Biden administration. We will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, larger than that by far of Dwight Eisenhower. You know, Eisenhower had a similar problem, but peanuts by comparison. It's like the border. I did a great job on the border. The border was terrible, but it was peanuts by comparison to what it is now. It was like a little tiny, a small percentage. Now, I mean, nobody's ever had to go through this. Nobody ever. No one has been hurt by Joe Biden's migrant invasion more than our great African-American and Hispanic-American communities. You know that, right? Because they're taking your jobs and they're creating lots of problems. And you know who else are hurt? People on Social Security, because your Social Security will be destroyed by the people coming in. There's too many of them. It's not sustainable. Joe Biden is costing you Medicare and he's costing you your Social Security. As sure as you're sitting or standing, look at the group of people. This was supposed to be a little thing for Bernie. That is a — Bernie, if these people all vote, which they will, you're going to win. Man. Wow. That's a lot of people back there. Wow. That's very impressive. They said, this is just a little rally for Bernie. That's not a little rally. I can't even see the end of the crowd. Well, get out and vote. Good man, get out and vote. With his open border policy, Joe Biden has repeatedly stabbed African-American voters in the back, including by granting millions and millions of work permits taking their jobs. The African-American community, the Hispanic community, are going to be the ones that suffer the most. And you know who else? Unions. Because unions are getting 
good, solid, high pay. And guess what's going to happen? Those unions are going to go out of business because people are owning trucking companies and carpenters and people that employ electricians and a lot of trades. They're not going to be able to do this. They're not going to be able to do it. The unions are going to go out. The Teamsters are in trouble. I'm dealing with the Teamsters. They should endorse me. I don't know if they will or not. I know the Teamsters are going to vote for me. The Teamsters, the real, the Teamsters that do the work. The head Teamsters, Sean and everybody, they're good men. They're good people. And I hope they're going to endorse Trump. I think it would be nice. It's been many decades before that's happened. But if you look at the United Auto Workers, what they've done to their people is horrible. They want to do this all-electric nonsense where the cars don't go far, they cost too much, and they're all made in, they're all made in China. And the head of the United Auto Workers never probably shook hands with a Republican before. They're destroying. You know, Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years 34 percent of the automobile manufacturing business in our country. Think of it. Went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think, that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. A friend of mine, all he does is build car manufacturing plants. He's the biggest in the world. I mean, honestly, I joke about it. He can't walk across the street. In that way, he's like Biden. But for building a plant, he can do the greatest plants in the world, right? That's all he cares about. I said, I'd like to see one of your plants recently. I said, I'd like to see, where can we go? Well, we have to travel to Mexico. I said, why Mexico? He said, because that's where the big plants are building. China's building really big plants in Mexico, and Mexico's building. What about here? Well, we're building much smaller plants here. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? So what they're saying, Jim Jordan, is that we're going to make cars in Mexico, and they're going to do it. You're not going to stand for that, Bernie? J.D., I have a, I have a feeling J.D. is not, JD's not big into that policy. 100 percent tariff. They won't sell any cars over here. And I'll tell them, if they want to build a plant in Michigan, in Ohio, in South Carolina, they can, using American workers. They can. They can't send Chinese workers over here, which they sometimes do. But they, if they want to do that, we're welcome, right? But they're not going to build them in Mexico, and they're not going to do that. We're going to tariff them at 100 percent, just like I've done. I saved the steel industry. The people that like me the most are the steel companies. But now I've been out for a little while. And guess what? United States Steel, 50 years, 60 years ago, maybe the greatest company in the world, was just sold to Japan. How do you like that? U.S. Steel owned and controlled by Japan. I wouldn't have allowed it to happen. Hopefully, they won't allow it to happen. When I'm president, we will end this Biden betrayal of the African-American community. We will stop the theft of American jobs and protesting and all of the things. We have to protest. We have no choice. We, you know, today, people that protest get arrested in this country. We never had that before. They can rip down Portland. They can rip down Minneapolis. And they can do whatever the hell they want. And nothing happens. If a Republican or a Christian, frankly, and what's happening with the Catholics? The Catholics are under siege. Any Catholic that votes for this numbskull is crazy because you are being persecuted. You are being now I'm being persecuted, I think, more than anybody, but who the hell knows? You know, all my life, you've heard of Andrew Jackson. He was actually a great general and a very good president. They say that he was persecuted as president more than anybody else. Second was Abraham Lincoln. This is just what they said. This is in the history books. They were brutal. 
Andrew Jackson's wife actually died over it, they say. Died of a broken heart, but she died over it. He was never quite the same. But they say Andrew Jackson. They say Abraham Lincoln was second, but he had a, you know, in all fairness, he did have a civil war. So you would think that would cause a problem, right? So you could understand it. But nobody comes close to Trump. And now even the wonderful historians, the fake historians they have in CNN. You ever see these guys? Biden makes a State of the Union speech, one of the worst speeches anybody here has ever heard. And at CNN, they said, that was one of the greatest speeches I've ever heard. That was one, that was one of the great MSDNC, MS, NBC, a bunch of fakes. They go, that was one of the greatest speeches I've ever heard. You know that CNN turned off when, uh, here we are, we campaigned for a year, and I obliterate my competition, you know. And they said, sir, please, don't talk about these people that way. They're Republicans. I said, I don't give a shit. They're, they're terrible. I said, I don't care. No, my, my highly paid advisor, sir, you shouldn't talk to them about that. One of the people said, they said, are you going to run against the president? He said, I have no comment. To me, that meant he's running. So I hit him hard. I hit him low. I hit him high, just like we did to ISIS. We hit him hard. We hit him low. We hit him high. We hit him in the middle. We hit him from on top. And we even came under the ground. We hit this guy so hard. By the time he announced, nobody knew what the hell happened. They said, what happened to him? He's a shell of the man. But we had other people, too. We have to hit hard. And the reason we have to hit hard is we have to win. We have to hit our enemies hard. We have to hit them and treat them with respect. But if they don't treat us with respect, we have to do things because our country's in trouble. We don't have the same country that we had three years ago. We were energy independent three years ago. Today, we're begging Venezuela for oil. Think of it. We're begging Venezuela for oil. And we're not going to stand for it. We're going to turn this around, and we're going to turn it around fast. Somebody said, we really like this person or that person, because they can serve for eight years. They can serve. I said, if it takes you more than a year to fix the problem, you have the wrong people. That was actually something. That was a political attack line, J.D. They said, he could be here for eight years. I said, if it takes you more than a year, you got the wrong guy. I said, if it takes you eight years to set this thing up, you don't want to vote for him. So that's the story. It's my first term, and we built the greatest economy. Think of it. In my first term, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. We had the highest tax cut ever. Ronald Reagan didn't do anything, even by comparison. We had the biggest regulation cuts and rising wages for citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. And we had a thing called no inflation. How do you like the idea of no inflation? <laughs> Under Biden, the cost of rent is up 30 percent. Groceries are up 30 percent. Everything is up. Chicken's up. Bread is up, and I can't read this damn teleprompter. <laughs> this sucker is moving around. <laughs> it's like reading, uh, a moving flag at a 35-mile-an-hour wind. And then they say Trump's a bad guy, because I'll say this. Don't pay the teleprompter company. Don't pay. Don't pay. And then he'll say, Trump didn't pay me. And they'll say, oh, Trump's a horrible human being. He's terrible. They gave me a pile of crap that th this is the craziest thing. And look, look at all the television I have up there. I got all the television. And they won't say that. They'll say, Trump made a speech. It wasn't so good. It wasn't so good. You know, it's funny. I was asking Jim Jordan about it because he was commenting that we have the largest crowds in the history of politics. Nobody comes close. If Ronald Reagan came to a place called Dayton, Ohio, have you heard of it? If he came to Dayton, Ohio, honestly, J.D., if he had three or 400 people in a ballroom, that would be great. We get 25, 30,000 people for every, a small rally is 20,000 people. We had 88,000 people show up in South, South Carolina. There was no, there was no venue. We had no, so we used the whole town. You read it. 
We used the whole town. The whole town was flooded. And, and it was unbelievable. And I said, you know, but nobody's ever had. We had one in Alabama. I call it the Mo Brooks speech, because Mo Brooks got up. He asked me for an endorsement. He was an election denier, which is the right thing, because the election was crooked. And Mo Brooks got up, and he hired, I believe it was either Mitt Romney or John McCain's management team. But before that, he asked me for an endorsement. I gave it to him. He took a 54-point lead. Then he called me and said, I'd like to do a rally. Mo Brooks, a friend of uh, Jim, right? Mo Brooks, legendary. Where's Mo? What happened to Mo? So he gets up. I said, you don't need a rally. You got a 54. Let me do rallies for people that need it. Sir, I'd like to have a rally. You have a 54-point lead. It's Alabama, where I won it by 45 points, OK? I love Alabama, but they understand we don't have to be there. We have to be in places that are a little closer than that. Although I happen to think we won most of the country, you want to know the truth. If the voting, if the voting were real, I actually think we won most of the country. I actually think we got a lot of Ohio's all over the place that you won't really recognize. But Mo Brooks got up. He said, sir, I'd really appreciate it. And we went to the State Fair. 68,000 people showed up at the State Fair. And an old guy came out. He looked like he was about 103. He said, you know, you did something I never thought would happen, Alabama. He said, this was the State Fair, and I guess he owns it. He said, I've been at this place for 60 years, 70 years, a long time, and you just broke the attendance record of a man named Elvis Presley. Can you believe it? And he said, you just broke it, man. He said, I never thought that would be possible. We had 68,000 people. So Mo Brooks gets up, and he says, let's forget about the election. Uh, the election was fine. Let's just forget. We have to get on to the future. He got booed. I was downstairs being interviewed by ABC Fake News. And what happened is I said, you couldn't hear anything. The place exploded with boos, boo, boo. He took a 54-point lead into that rally, and he reduced it to he was losing by 20 by the end of the night. He dropped 74 points. And we have a very wonderful senator. I endorsed her the following morning, Katie, Katie Britt. She was doing a good job. Who liked the job she did the other night? I thought she did a very nice job. Liberals didn't like it very much, I guess, but I thought she did a very nice job. But we have another senator now because people don't want to hear bullshit. They don't want to hear it. They want, they want a country that's run correctly, that's run properly. And they want fair elections, and they want borders. They have to have borders. If they don't have borders, you don't have a country. But if you don't have fair elections, you don't. And you know what I add to it more and more? The fake news. They should be the police of our country, because if they were legit, they don't, you know, the biggest problem I have with them is the things they don't report. They barely, until recently, they would not talk about the borders. They wouldn't talk about the fact that our country is being destroyed at the borders. It's what they don't say that's a problem. And it's and they don't say a lot. And what they do say is fake news. So other than that, I think they're fantastic. I'll, I'll move this over. Great job, fellas. Don't pay these suckers, please. I'll pay. Whoever the hell did that, they son of a gun. These people. I think Joe Biden put him in. <laughs> With your vote, we will throw out the Bidenomics and we will reinstate a thing called Maganomics. Maganomics. <laughs> Crooked Joe Biden and his socialist thugs are looting trillions and trillions of dollars from the American people and giving it to radical left lunatics and friends. But Biden's reign of plunder and terror stops the day I take the oath of office. The hardworking American taxpayer will once again have a friend and a fighter and a champion in the White House. Biden's socialist spending, his socialist spending is really what's happening is uh, your Social Security is, is going to be gone. You know, they don't say it. They never say it. They will not, you will not be able to have Social Security with this guy in office because he's destroying the economics of our country. 
And that includes Medicare, by the way. And American seniors are going to be in big trouble. I made a promise that I will always keep Social Security, Medicare. We always will keep it. We won't be cutting it. We have liquid gold under the ground. We'll be drilling like a son of a gun. But we're leaving your Social Security around. They won't. And they can't make that pledge because their economic theory is no good, because they're taking in millions and millions of people in this country, and they're spending, you know, I look at New York, and New York is very low on money for years, and New York State, very, very low. And a lot of people want to leave because of the lawfare that's going. A lot of companies are leaving because they don't want to get caught up into the crap that I got caught up into where they go after you for no reason whatsoever. No victim, no this, no that. They let violent criminals roam the streets, roam in the subways, but they go after Trump all the time. And uh, people get tired of it. P companies don't want to be subject to that. But if you take a look at all of the things that are happening, the money, the billions and billions of dollars, and I say, where did they get this money? California, the same thing. Gavin Newscom. does anyone ever? <laughs> Gavin Newscom, S-C-U-M is his last. No, Gavin Newscom. He, uh, this guy, he's always talking about, oh, California, it's great, great. They're losing a fortune. People are moving out. I have property there. I love California. One of the most beautiful places. They're destroying it. They're destroying California. This guy is a horrible, horrible governor. In a certain way, I'd like him to run, you know, to be honest. I think it would, I just think it would be, you know, he's a, he's sort of a, he's just a bullshit artist. It's like, it's crazy. He's done such a bad job. But you look at what Democrats have done. Look at Illinois. I don't know how it continues. You have this guy Pritzker. I don't know. He's too busy eating. He wants to eat all the time. Would you like a hamburger? How many do you want? Five? I'll have five burgers, please. You go to his office. Would you like a hamburger? Yeah. Okay, I'll have five burgers, please. Who the hell orders five burgers? But look, our country, our country can't go through it, and we're not going to go through it much longer. You know, we play the song, you know that, Hold On, I'm Coming. Do we like it? Who liked the Rolling? Okay, you had the Rolling Stone, uh, Stone song, which we liked. That was for first. You know that song, right? You can't always get what you want which made no sense, you know. But it was a good song, right? It made no sense. You can't always get, they ask me, I say, no, they're talking about the Democrats. I said, the Democrats can't always get what they want. So that way, I at least saved it. But it was a good song. Or the Sam and Dave. Who likes the second better? Uh, hold on, I'm coming. Yes? You like it better? More, do you like it better? Yeah, both good. The other does bring back some good memories, in all fairness. And no wonder, it's really no wonder that Joe Biden and his thugs are so desperate to stop us, they only know. And you remember this, we're the only ones, and they know this, that can stop them. We're the only ones. There's nobody else around. If this election, if this election isn't won, I'm not sure that you'll ever have another election in this country. Does that make sense? I don't think you're going to have another election in this country if we don't win this election. I don't think you're going to have another election, or certainly not an election that's meaningful. And we better get out, or we better. I actually say that the date, remember this, November 5th, I believe it's going to be the most important date in the history of our country. I believe that. This country is weaponizing law enforcement for high-level election interference against Biden's top Political opponent never happened. We're not going to let it happen. We're not going to let it happen. I'll tell you what, my numbers are much higher than they would have been had these idiots just, I have like, like deranged Jack Smith. Somebody said, why do you call him deranged? I said, because I like telling the truth. He's a, he's a deranged individual. They said, but why don't you be nice to him? Because if you were nice to him, he'd be much worse. He's a, he's a bad guy. They're all bad people. They want to destroy our country, and we're not going to let them destroy our country. We're not going to let it happen. All of the persecution is only happening because I'm running for president and leading in the polls. If I weren't running, I wouldn't have any indictments. I got indicted more than Al Capone. Does anybody know who Al Capone is? Alphonse Capone. 
He would even take a guy like J.D. and slap him around. He'd take J.D. Who the hell are you, Senator? Little that slap you around. No, he used to kill people. If he didn't like their company at dinner, he'd kill them. He got indicted less than I did. My father's looking down, and my mother was such a beautiful woman. And she's looking down with my father, and she's saying, how the hell did our boy get four indictments? And not only that, all these local cases, like Fawny, Fawny. It's spelled Fanny. It's spelled Fanny like your ass, right, Fanny? But when she became DA, she decided to add a little French, a little fancy. Fawny. Fawny and, you know, Fawny and Mr. and Mrs. Wade, which his wife did not appreciate. His wife didn't appreciate. Can you imagine these two people trying to take down a very popular, I'm a very popular president. I mean, again, I got more votes than any sitting president in history. I, we have these two lowlifes trying to take down a president of the United States. But you know, equally badly, they went after 26 people. They wanted to make it 48 people. They had some senators that these guys know very well who were indicted, who were ready to be indicted, and somebody stopped it. And they wanted to find out what the hell is going on in Georgia. What's going on with the elections that it's so crazy? And they almost got indicted for that. Think of it, United States senators that were doing their job. These people are lowlifes, and they were sent here by the Department of Justice. This isn't a local Georgia thing. This was done. They would go in to Washington, D.C., and have meetings that lasted for eight hours on numerous occasions with the Justice Department and the White House. So it's all coming in from, it's all politics. It's all coming in from Biden. The same thing with Letitia James from New York. This is another real Lola. She campaigned on, I will get Trump. I will get him. I will get him. Then she goes to court. Oh, no, it's, uh, I'm not political. I'm not political at all. And then you have Bragg, the DA. So in the DA's office, they didn't trust Bragg. So they took their top person from the DOJ, his name is Colangelo, and they took him and they put him in the DA of Manhattan's office to get Trump. Think of it. Other than that, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun. You know, it's like an unbelievable situation. But I think with time, it's become so discredited. Don't you think, Jim? It's become, actually, Jim Jordan had hearings on Bragg. And how did they turn out? That was what a mess. What a disgraceful. We can't let this happen to our country. In the latest Emerson poll, general election, I'm up nine points here in Ohio. In another poll, I'm up 14 points. And in another one, we're up 17 points. I only read polls when they're good, by the way. Nationwide, we're leading in every single swing state against Biden. The largest in the largest margins ever. You know what was interesting? Joe Biden won against Barack Hussein Obama. Has anyone ever heard of him? Barack Hussein Obama. Or as Rush Limbaugh would say, Barack Hussein Obama. He used to scream out the name Hussein. But he, he was, uh, think of this, just think of this. Every swing state, Biden beat Obama. But every other state, he got killed. You think that's an honest election? I could give you a hundred different things. We better straighten out our elections. We better get smart, because the people of the country are not going to take it. We're not going to take it. We're not going to take it any longer. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. I'm not going to allow it to happen. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. Great badge of honor. Because I'm being indicted for you. And never forget, our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. That's what this is all about. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, 
They're not after me, they're after you. I just happen to be standing in the way. Okay, yeah. But if you want to defeat the radical left Democrats, you first have to get out, you have to vote, and vote for Bernie Marino. He's a great guy. They're, they're doing a number. You know, I didn't think I'd say this, because, you know, you keep — they're doing a number on him just like they've done on everybody else. That's all they do. Disinformation and misinformation, they're masters at it. They lie, they cheat. These people, they lie, they cheat, they make up fake stories like Russia, Russia, Russia. You know, they made up the Russia, Russia, Russia story. Then I won that. No collusion. After 18 angry Democrats said there was no collusion, they didn't have anything. They went through millions of phone calls, not one call to Russia. It was a fake deal made up by Crooked Hillary for losing. Although I don't call it crooked anymore. I've reversed it, right? No, it was made up by Hillary Clinton. And how about this guy? He may end up being a United States senator, right? Shifty Adam Schiff. Think of it. Can you believe it? He may end up being a senator. This is one of the most dishonest human beings. He made up my conversation that I had with the president of Ukraine. He made up the conversation. He said there were seven times quid pro quo. Remember that? Quid pro quo. Seven times! Now, think of it. That means you've threatened somebody seven times. I want money. I want this. And then you say it again. I want money. I want — I never spoke to the guy. He would think I'm a total lunatic, okay? But he said seven times, he asked. And he made the speech in Congress. I said, good, I'll sue this guy. Then I learned you can't sue any congressman because they have total immunity if they say — they can say whatever they want in Congress. But here's what they didn't know. The phone call, because it was a White House call, and for some reason, it happened to be on tape. So I let them go more and more. The stories got wilder and wilder. Then we re released the tape. And Nancy Pelosi, who's major sleaze, by the way, a major sleaze. Nancy Pelosi, she said to her people, what the hell did you get me into? You hear this call? He didn't do any of this stuff. And you know what they said? Let's just pretend he did and keep going forward. That's how — that's how that whole thing came. So she knew it was false because she heard it. But I will tell you this. After they made up the story, and then after that, they heard the tape, they died. They didn't know that phone call was taped. That was one good case of a phone call being taped. And they were taped, and they got caught. And you know what they do? They took two weeks off, and then they said, Ukraine, Ukraine. Ukraine. They went into a new scandal. They do it. These are bad people. These are sick people. And they're doing it here, too. They're doing it to a very good man, and we can't let it happen. I said on the plane, I'm not going to talk about it. I won't talk about it. But I didn't know I wouldn't have teleprompters. I have nothing else to talk about, <laughs> to be honest. I have nothing else to talk about. But you just have to remember, these are, these are disinformation and misinformation. Slightly different. I won't go into the difference, but there is a slight difference. And they're masters at lying, essentially. And they make up stories about people. They made up many about me, and I fought them off. I want to tell you, if anybody else were the nominee, they would have done the same thing to them, and they wouldn't have been able to take it. I think Front Row Joes would agree. If those people that were running against me in the Republican primary, had they succeeded — and you have to say, they didn't even come close, not even a little close — but had — you know why? Because you love the job I did for four years. For four years, you want to get back to the best economy that we've ever had. But had they succeeded, they would have come in with the same kind of stuff, and they would have been hitting them, and they wouldn't have been able to handle it, I can promise you. Bernie is a political outsider who spent his entire life building up Ohio communities. He's highly respected all over the country, and he's going to be a warrior in Washington. Bernie's strong on borders. He'll fight to crush the cartels that are flooding our towns and cities with fentanyl and deadly drugs. Now, we're going to stop that. We're going to get it stopped, and we're going to get it stopped fast. We're essentially at war. You know, we lose — I believe we lose 350,000, not 100. You know, they keep saying 100, 190, 100. I believe you're losing 
350,000 people a year and no war. You wouldn't lose that many of you were fighting a war. And fighting a war would be a lot easier than fighting this. And we're going to get it stopped. You know, I almost had it stopped, and then we had the bad election. I went to President Xi. I said, we're not going to do any business if you keep sending fentanyl, because it comes from China and it comes through Mexico. Sort of simple. But they're smart and they're, you know, not exactly uh, — look, they're, they're the enemy. When you think of it, they're the enemy. But it comes through Mexico, but it's made in China. I said to President Xi, if you keep doing this, we're going to stop doing business with China. You're not going to make your $500 billion a year. And we had it down, way down. Nobody has ever talked to China the way I did. No president. We never took in 10 cents. I took in $440 billion from China. They were not — they were not exactly unhappy with that election. But I said to President Xi, who I actually had a great relationship with, other than he likes China and I love the United States. And I said, you can't — you can't do this. You can't do this with what you're doing, sending fentanyl. And if you're going to continue to do it, we're not going to trade with you, and we're going to charge you the highest tariffs of any country anywhere in the world, and it's going to be effective immediately. He says, no, no, you don't have to do that. We will put maximum penalty on the people that are making the fentanyl. I said, I know what your maximum penalty is, and you do, too. Does that mean the death penalty? Yes. We will give them the death penalty if they send fentanyl into the United States. And that was all done, and it was all set to go into effect. And then we had a thing called the rigged election, and it never got done because when Biden came in, he can't talk that way to China because they've given him a lot of money. They give him a lot of money. Do you ever notice how timid he is with China? The reason he's timid is because they know much about him that you'll never know. He's a Manchurian candidate. He's a pure Manchurian candidate. They know things about him that you'll never know unless they want to reveal it. So all of a sudden, we have a very weak president on China. But I exposed China, and I'm very proud to have done it. Bernie will vote to save the American auto industry, along with me. We're working hard, and J.D. and everybody else that's working on it, because our auto industry is going to be dead very quickly because of the head — the head of the — the head of the United Auto Workers. What the deal he made is so crazy. It's so bad. Short term, two years, but you're not going to have any cars being made here anymore. They're all going — for him to allow an all-electric mandate on cars that just don't go far. If I want to drive to Washington, D.C., from Dayton, I have to stop four times. If you want to drive on a, you know, tank of gasoline, you can drive there. It's not going to be acceptable. People aren't going to have it. You can't build that number of chargers. You know, the charging booths. If you were going to build the charging booths that are necessary, our country would be immediately bankrupt because it would cost trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. And by the way, I'm a big fan. You can have electric cars if you want them, but you also have to have other forms of movement. You have to have other forms. You have to be able to have and use gasoline. Here we are. We have more gasoline. We have more oil and gas than any country in the world. You know, we have more than Russia. We have more than Saudi Arabia. And we're not allowed to use it. And you know that this guy is now getting his oil from Venezuela. Venezuela was the enemy. Venezuela is going to end up — this guy running Venezuela, call him a dictator, call him what you want, he's going to be the richest guy in the world. He's got all of his criminals leaving, and a lot of people are leaving. He's going to end up with Venezuela and about uh, 50 friends and the United States, under a very stupid president, buying their oil. We're buying oil from Venezuela. You know where it's — you know where they purify the oil? A place called Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. That's where they refine it. So they take out the oil, and Venezuela has bad oil. They have tar. They have tar, which is a very low level. And you have to heat it and heat it. And the uh, — if you're a big environmentalist, we do it in Houston, Texas. So we take it out there. And think of it, if you believe in this, like a lot of people do, and I'm okay with it, those fumes are leaving the United States because the only refinery that could do that oil, the tar — it's not even oil 
The only refinery that can do it happens to be in Houston. And it's not a pretty sight, I'll tell you what. And that's where we are now. Bernie will be tough in China, ferocious on crime. He'll be great on election integrity. He wants to get wokeness out of our military. We have a somewhat don't, — don't worry too much about — I watched our military knock out ISIS. You know, I did it in four weeks. I knocked out ISIS in four weeks. They said it was going to take four to five years. We have great generals. We have great military. They're going to be okay. But the — on top is woke. How about the changing — I get out. How about the changing of the names of — we won Fort Bragg, as an example. You know, the people in the area are going crazy. They changed the name of Fort Bragg. They changed the name of Fort Robert E. Lee. They changed the name of the different forts. We won World War I. We won World War II. We won everything we fought with, really, essentially, from those forts, if we wanted to win. A lot of wars we fight not to win. We fight just to fight because we have stupid people on top. We don't fight wars to win. But we won World War I, World War II out of these forts, and now they changed the name in disgrace. It's a very ter terrible thing. But Bernie will not let the radical left Democrats raise your taxes. They want to raise your taxes to a level that you've never seen before. And the, ta the tax cuts that I got you, the biggest tax cuts in history, they expire soon. And the Democrats don't want to renew them. That will go down as the biggest tax, e tax increase in the history of our country. And it's going to be very bad. But J.D. and Bernie and all of us, and we have a lot of good people in the Senate. We have great people in the House. And we're not going to let it happen, Jim. Is that right? We're not going to let it happen. So Bernie's running against a weak rhino named Matt Dolan. Now, here's what I know about Matt Dolan. I don't know much about him. He's trying to become the next Mitt Romney. I think Mitt Romney is his hero. Matt Dolan once ran for office as a Democrat, and he's easily pushed around by the woke left lunatics who renamed his family's baseball team. Now, think of this. You know, I happen to like baseball. I like sports, and I like tradition. So you have a team called the Cleveland Indians. Indians. They're Indians. Indians. And they took the name Cleveland Indians and made it the Cleveland Guardians. It's almost like they're in charge of a trust fund. They're in charge of a trust fund. The Cleveland Guardians. And my attitude is anybody that changes the name of the Cleveland Indians to the Cleveland Guardians should not be a senator, should not be a governor. I don't know Matt Dolan, but I just know that he's the guy that, I guess, owns the team in some form. Uh, he was in charge of changing the name. Who wants — okay, we'll have a poll. Who wants to keep the Cleveland Indians storied? Wait. <laughs> so much for that, Paul. Okay, ready? Who wants to see the name changed to the — and the way they did it to the Guardians? Who wants the Guardians? Okay, nice and loud. Now, who wants to keep it the Cleveland Indians? That wasn't too tough, right? So, this guy, Matt Dolan, who's weak on borders, weak on crime, he wants to vote a mass amnesty bill for illegal aliens. He cares more about spending your money to and sending it to Ukraine. And you know what? We got to — we'll do things with Ukraine. We should loan them the money, not send them the money. We should loan them the money so that if they do make it, if they make it, they're against tremendous odds. But if they make it, they pay us back. Loan them the money. Give it to them as a loan. Let them be a little bit like they have to be a little nice. Loan them the money. Don't just hand them a check for $60 billion. I tell you, Zelensky is one of the greatest salesmen in history. Every time he comes to the country, he walks away with 50 or $60 billion. I've never been able to do that. He's a better salesman. He's a much better salesman than I am. But think about it. Dolan wants to have left-wing gun control. He voted against a law to let Ohio citizens defend themselves from dangerous criminals. You're not allowed to have your gun. But the criminals are allowed because they're not going to follow the law. So they can walk into your place and you'll say, please, please don't do it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Matt Dolan — and I, there's nobody better to the Second Amendment 
than me. I am the strongest and the best ever. It, they never touched it. And it was not easy. Matt Dolan also strongly supported Joe Biden's $1.2 trillion Green New Scam. It's called the Green New Scam, which helped cause rampant inflation. It's not the biggest reason. The biggest reason for inflation was what they did with energy and oil when they closed up the oil. Now he's drilling like crazy. He went back to my policy. You know why? Because it was up to $6, $7, $8 a gallon. So now he said, just go back, just go back. After the election, we'll kill these people. And that's what's going to happen. They went back to my drilling policies. They allowed them to continue drilling. But the day after the election, it's over. I, they are sick. That's why this Tuesday, you need to elect America First champion Bernie Marino to the U.S. Senate. And Bernie, if I could, I'd like to have you come up and say a few words, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Republican nominee for 2024. And the future 47th president of the United States of America. You know, I want to clear something up. I want to clear something up for everybody here. I am so sick and tired of Republicans that will say, I support President Trump's policies, but I don't like the man. This is a good man. This is a great American. This man wakes up every day fighting for us, fighting for this country. He loves this country like no other leader of this nation has ever loved this country. And we have Republicans that say that because they'll bend the knee to the media and they want to be their best friends. And so they'll dis they'll disparage this man. How does Ohio feel about President Donald J. Trump? Thank you, Bernie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, there's, I, I have to say, so, we did, we did all of us. It's we, it's not me, it's all of us. We did great in 2016, we did great in 2020. There was tremendous spirit. There's never been spirit like we have now. There's never been. 2016, and we did much better in 2020. You see it, I mean, you know it. But, and we had unbelievable rallies, unbelievable. There's never been spirit like we have right now. And that's because you got a glimpse of what these people are doing to our country which you didn't have before. So it's been really pretty amazing, I will tell you that. We're also pleased to be joined by a friend of mine and somebody that has really turned out to be great. You know, when you endorse somebody, you don't know. You think they're going to be good and they turn on you. I'll give you plenty of examples, but perhaps not now. But this guy turned out to be an absolute star. He's a young star, and he's a great senator and a real fighter, J.D. Vance. J.D. Great job. Great job. You want to say something, J.D.? We have it so sad. Come on up. Come on. He should say. I think we should. It's a, hey, it's a nice Saturday. What the hell? We have nothing else to do, right? Hey, it's good to see you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, first of all, I got to say, the teleprompter really does look like hell here. The president's telling the truth here. But look, um, let, me, let me say something. It's a real statistic, sir. I looked this up. Do you know that all of the net job growth under Biden's presidency has gone to the foreign born? And Donald Trump's presidency, the job growth went to American citizens. Let's rebuild prosperity for America's citizens and reelect Donald J. Trump. I know he loves this country. I know he loves the state of Ohio. And I know he loves Bernie Marino. Let's help, help Donald Trump out, elect Bernie Marino, and elect Donald Trump in 2024. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Greg. Now, I'm telling you, there's never been — there's never been spirit like this. This party has — and I hate when I listen to these people. You know, they say, while uh, Biden and Trump are extremely unpopular — I'm not unpopular. I got 92 percent approval rating with the Republican Party. We're not a — they like to say, Biden and Trump, don't put me with him. This guy's unpopular. He can't talk. We have a very special woman who's hot as a politician. She's uh, she's uh, doing an incredible job in South Dakota. She's the governor, Christy Nome. Christy, thank you, Christy. Thank you. Very great job. Come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, when you were in the White House. And I was governor of South Dakota. Every single day, I got to get up and be on offense. I could call this man in the White House, and I would tell him what problem I had with the federal government or a foreign country or a trade agreement or helping a business be successful. And he would say, Christy, let's do it. We will fix it. As soon as Joe Biden got in the White House, I went on defense. All I do now is fight to protect the freedom of my people. That is the difference that leadership has. That's the difference that this man has. Let's put him back in the White House so we can be on offense, we can make America great again, and we can do it with U.S. Senators like Bernie Moreno. Thank you so much for being here for Bernie. We're going to win. We're going to win big. Thank you very much. And you're not allowed to say it, so I will not. You know, you're not allowed to say she's beautiful, so I'm not going to say that. I will not say it, because that's the end of your political career if you make — if you make that statement, that's the end of your political — so I will not say that. We also have a uh, — one of my favorite people in Washington, one of my favorite people anywhere, frankly. He's a fighter. He's a warrior like you've never seen. You know, people don't know about Jim Jordan, that he was a great wrestler. And in high school — and this is something it's almost hard to understand, because you know as a freshman, and if you're wrestling seniors, a freshman can't beat a senior. He went undefeated in all of high school. He never was defeated. So he was wrestling as a freshman against seniors. And someday he's going to explain to me how he did that, because that's pretty good. He then went on to be one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of the NCAA, I think. He also uh, became an All-American. And his sons are All-American wrestlers. And they're just a fantastic family. The family is so incredible. and. He's somebody, he just gets it done. He's a warrior. Jim Jordan. Jim, I got to get him. Come, come up here. Come up here, Jim. We got to get him up. Explain how, please explain how a freshman beats a senior. Well, I would just say this. Um, the left controls just about everything. The left controls big media. The left controls big tech. The left controls big corporations. The left controls big sports. I mean, watch the NBA. The left controls Hollywood. The left controls higher education. The left controls the White House. The left maybe, most importantly, controls the federal bureaucracy. But the left doesn't control we the people. And we the people, we the great people of this great country are getting set in November to put the best guy we've ever had in the White House, back in the White House. And starting Tuesday, we're getting ready to put Bernie Marino in the United States Senate. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Great guy. We also have Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost. Dave, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Great job you're doing. I did a great job. Indiana Attorney General Todd Rokita. Todd, thank you. Thank you. Nice seeing you, Todd. Great job you're doing. Ohio GOP chair, where are you? Where are you? What a job. Where are you? Come up. Just come up. Wave to everybody very quickly, because you have done an incredible job, and thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Former state GOP chair Jane Timken, a friend of mine and a wonderful woman. Hello, Jane. There you are. I'm looking for Jane. I called her before. How's things going? She said, things are going good. Kareem Lanier and J.R. Majewski. Now, J.R., you know, they hit J.R. very hard, I have to tell you. These are friends of mine. Uh, J.R. was a hero and is a hero. 
and they hit him very hard with false stuff that he wasn't a hero. And after the election, they found out he was. And I, on behalf of our country, I'd like to apologize to J.R. Majewski because you were treated very unfairly. So, okay? Uh, you were treated very unfairly. The guy was a hero, and they came out with a narrative that he wasn't a hero, and I think it's a disgrace, a disgrace. I got to know him because he was carving the name Trump into farmland as I was flying over your state. And I'd say, boy, that's the biggest Trump I've ever seen. Those are the biggest letters. And I said, who did that? And his name is J.R. Majewski, and I just thought it was great. And I introduced him. And then he went into a primary with six very talented, good people, and he was not even thought about. And he ended up winning that primary because of one rally where I introduced him. Uh, but he is a hero, and everybody now knows it. Thank you, J.R., very much. Appreciate it. From the very first day that we take back the White House from crooked Joe Biden, I believe we are going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. In my first four years, I kept my promise to the workers of Ohio, to the workers of our country. We ended the disaster known as NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with the brand new USMCA, Mexico, Canada. That's the best trade deal they say ever made. Actually, the best trade deal I made was the deal with China, but I don't even talk about it. They have to buy $50 billion worth of our products. But after we all had to suffer through that horrible China virus or COVID, uh, I, don't, I don't talk about it. But this was a great win for Ohio farmers and for Ohio manufacturers. I took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing in hundreds of millions. Think of this. We started with hundreds of millions of dollars the first couple of months, and I said, this is pretty good. We ended up taking in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. Not one president ever took in 10 cents. They never asked him for anything. And we were rocking and rolling, and we were doing great. We had the greatest economy ever. And for our great veterans, we passed VA accountability and VA choice. We did something that nobody and we had to get that because of guys like Jim Jordan. We had to get it passed through Congress. And we got it passed through Congress, and that was a big deal. We fully rebuilt the U.S. military, and we created Space Force. And I was the first president in decades who started no new wars, except I brought our troops back home. We had no new wars, but we defeated ISIS. Everybody said couldn't be done. We did it very quickly. And we have a great military. I tell you, I saw that with ISIS. Once I let them go, I said, go ahead, fellas, do what you have to do. General Raisin Kane. What's your name, General Raisin, sir? What's your last name, Kane? I said, your name's Raisin Kane? I love you. This is what I've been looking for. I've been looking for a guy named Raisin Kane. And he knocked him out. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled and we will restore peace through strength. That's what we need, peace through strength. And I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act if China or any other country makes us pay 100 or 200 percent tariff, which they do, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100 or 200 percent. In other words, you screw us and we'll screw you. It's very simple, very fair. We don't do that. And as tariffs on foreign countries go up, taxes on American workers and families will go very substantially down and will bring businesses back to our country because people are going to — they want to avoid paying the tariffs. It's very simple. It's what other countries do to us. And I had it going, and then we had the gift from China, the COVID come in. We did a phenomenal job in that. Never got the credit. Always got the credit for the military. Always got the credit for ISIS and so many things always got the credit for the economy and for no inflation. We did a great job with some unknown disease at the time. Nobody knew what the hell it was. And what we did was a miracle, and we led the world. And when I left office, our stock market was higher than it was just prior to COVID coming in, which is a tremendous achievement. We would have gone down the tubes. That would have been in 1929. And speaking of 1929, there are some brilliant Wall Street analysts like Scott and some others, but a brilliant, very brilliant Wall Street analyst that say the only thing good right now about our economy is the stock market. 
And the only reason that that's good is because people think that Trump is going to be elected president. And if they ever thought that he wasn't, you would end up with a crash, the likes of which we haven't seen since 1929. So they can take that the way they want. But I happen to agree that uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of hope that we get back in. We had a great stock market. We had the most successful economy in the history of our country by far. We had really the most successful economy probably in the history of the world. And people weren't taking advantage of us. And China was paying up. Nobody could get away with what they were getting away with. I made new trade deals with Japan, with South Korea, with Vietnam. We made so many new trade deals. The deals were so bad. I used to sit back and look at these deals. I said, who could have negotiated these deals? They were so one-sided. We changed them all. On day one, I will terminate crooked Joe Biden's insane electric vehicle mandate. We will restore law and order to our country. And I'm going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong action on crime. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they ever have been before. And we're going to be working with Democrat mayors and Democrat governors if we have to. You know, our dying cities, they're all run by Democrats. We're going to work with them, and we're going to restore our cities. We will take over our horribly run, horrible, 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 the capital of the United States of America, Washington, D.C. We will clean it up, renovate it, and rebuild our capital cities so that it will be an absolute beacon of beauty and peace and prosperity and no longer be the crime capital virtually of the world. People are being killed there every single week. People are being killed. I lost a young man who was fantastic in the administration two weeks ago. He was going to pick up his wife, and he was waiting for her. And a thug came along and said, I want your car. And he shot him and killed him as the wife is coming out to be picked up by her husband, who she loved. And he died almost immediately. And uh, we can't let this happen to our country. We can't let this happen. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And something I can't believe I have to say, but I have to say it because the Democrats are pushing it. I will keep men out of women's sports, okay? I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. We will protect innocent life, and we will re — and we don't have free speech anymore. Today, you speak, and they want to put you in jail. Today, you speak, and they want to put you in jail. Even if you're telling the truth, they want to put you in jail. We will restore free speech to our nation, and I will secure our elections. We will have fair and honest elections again. But until then, you have to go and you have to vote. You have to vote like you've never voted before. And I said it before, and I'll say it again. This is all about November 5th, the most important day. I believe, I really believe this. You know, I used to say in 2016, this is going to be the most important vote. I didn't say that in 2020 because we had the country going really well. In fact, we had a statement, keep America great. It was going to replace MAGA. In a certain way, I'm glad it didn't because MAGA is MAGA. It's always going to be MAGA as opposed to CAG. But it was keep America great. And America was great. We made it great. And then we had a bad election. A horrible, horrible thing happened because of